let's get to part two of chasing sub MOA for my AR-15 here. Palmetto State Armory, 18 inch stainless steel barrel. It was a complete rifle when I got it. I do have a Vortex Viper, six and a half to 20 on here. 30 mil tube, 50 mil lens, quarter MOA adjustments. Recently I've thrown a Hogue rubberized grip on there and uh, I've repainted the rifle as well. I was using a matte finish spray paint before and the oils from the gun and the oils from my skin got into the paint and made uh, blemishes in it, just looked bad. So this time I put a clear coat on top. It is just spray paint, uh, it's a lot cheaper to do it that way. So uh, I think it looks pretty good. So what I was working with this time, I'm using Federal Brass in all of my rounds I'm working on, just to keep consistency. Uh, Federal is a cheap ammunition buy and it has pretty good brass at the end of it. PMC, a lot of the flash holes are offset, just uh, not a lot of high quality I see out of that. I like the Federal for the price. Um, also using CCI, small rifle primers. I bought a thousand of those uh, when I bought the first round of everything that I did buy. So those will be appearing for the first little while on this. Also, uh, I switched out from a 68 grain Hornady boat tail hollow point to a 75 grain boat tail hollow point. And the reason of that is because it's more readily available where I'm at. The two powders I've started out with has been Hodged and Varget and Reloader 15. The reason I've chosen these two powders, uh, I was referred to Varget by a person that I work with. He said it was a great uh, starting out overall good powder you can try many things with it and then I was also told that with these Hornady 75 grains uh, somebody had been getting really good results with Reloader 15 so I took their advice there and decided to try it out. One more thing I did get a chronograph since the last video I've made so I'm able to get a lot more data on all of my shots learn velocities see what the bullets are doing with the different powders and charge weights which is uh, really important for trying to see how the bullets stabilize and what speed they begin to stabilize at so I can kind of base if I'm getting enough powder and velocity out of it to stabilize the bullets. So this is Reloader 15. It's using 22 and a half grains with a 75 grain boat tail hollow point with my 223 brass. Um, I wrote this upside down. The average velocity across these three shots was 2249 standard deviation of 4.6 uh, that's pretty amazing right there the standard deviation I had nothing else come close to that so this was apparently a pretty good consistent ammo I came up with there uh, this one did come out to measure 1.2 inches but I was shooting at 120 yards so that's dead on one MOA there that's not too bad the only problem is this is the lowest powder charge I went with, so this is going the slowest out of all the other bullets. It will get blown around in the wind more if I try and shoot long range with it. Again, this is Reloader 15. Um, this time, I bumped up one whole grain here. I went to, from 22.5 to 23.5. This group opened up, not real impressive, 120 yards. Uh, it was about 20 degrees and it was foggy. I couldn't have gone any farther than that. I was having a real hard time even seeing this red crosshair through the fog. But uh, I seem to have pulled it off on a few of them. And closing this test out with 24 and a half grains of Reloader 15. The average velocity was 25.82. Standard deviation of 17.1. Um, if you don't know, that's the difference in velocity between each round. Not all of them fly exactly the same speed, so it averages out the difference in the speeds between each shot. Um, this one this is about a two inch crosshair here. Um, this one's probably flying into three inches. Not real impressive there, but uh, that's what this is all about. Learning what does and does not shoot. Now we're going to take a look at some Hodged and Varget powder. We started out with 22 grains of Varget. It's a 22V here. Shooting 223, 75 bullets. The average velocity I got was 2376. Standard deviation of 21. 
uh, right here, one MOA at 120 yards is 1.2 inches, not just the standard one inch that I'm usually chasing after. These grouped at 0.67 inches, which is just about half MOA. It's almost dead on. So let's take a look here. Um, I was measuring center to center on that one. So on the outer edges, 0.9. Try and close into the centers. About 0.7, somewhere in there. But uh, that's great grouping right there. Um, the only thing I would be concerned about is it's flying a little bit slow. Um, hopefully I can get some more speed out of that uh, with accuracy. Now we have bumped up to 23 grains Varget. Across Reloader 15 and Varget, I was doing one grain increments between the three shot groups. So this one is one inch at 120 yards, right in here. Uh, that's below MOA, so another sub MOA here. Average velocity here, 2497, standard deviation of 40.8. A little bit higher standard deviation than I'd want, but still shooting good. And now to 24 grains of Argot. This is where I'm going to get my higher speed that I'm looking for. 2667 average, standard deviation 27. The standard deviation got better, which I'm glad to see. Um, this one measured out to be 0.63 inches at 120 yards. That's half MOA. Uh, like I wrote down here, 20 degrees in the fog, December 31st. Um, it's freezing ass cold out in the Utah desert right now. Uh, 223 brass, 75 bullet, just like everything else. Um, this stuff shot really well. I'm going to load up a bunch with 24 grains. See if I can get consistent velocities in different temperatures. See what the standard deviations, what they look like, and see if I can continue to get good, uh, get good groupings out of this. I might even try going a little bit hotter rounds, see if I can stabilize the bullet a little bit more. But I'm real happy with what I'm seeing there. So, Bargat shoots well. Reloader 15 is okay. Um, I'd have to play around some more with this one. I'm gonna see uh, if I push it faster, if I can get it to catch up with the Bargat. The Varga is coming out faster at 24 grains than the Reloader 15 is at 24 and a half grains. So Varga's pushing a little bit quicker. Um, if you're trying to do all this with your AR-15, do your own load development, I do have an 18 inch barrel. If you have a 16 inch, you may not get these velocities. Uh, work your way up to this. Don't blow up your gun because of what I'm telling you. This is a 223 wild barrel. And, uh, that's about all you need to know there. I am using a Rock River two-stage trigger, which seems to help. But uh, I really like this gun. I couldn't recommend it more. I just whipped up a new sling here the other day. Not looking too bad. Goes with the gun. It's really comfortable. I put this fat shoulder piece in there. And then the standard small. So at the end of this test, my first time out trying these 75 grain boat, boat tail hollow points, I have achieved sub MOA. Matter of fact, half MOA at this distance. Um, it's awesome. I'm gonna keep playing around with these powders, see if I can get them to shoot better, or just consistently half MOA. I don't think I could ask for more out of my semi-automatic AR-15 here. Uh, I think it shoots great. And I can't wait to see what else I can do here.